Hi, Dorota. So you have a question here I thought would be interesting for others as well. Go ahead. So I'm speaking as a, as a self-identified depth junkie or someone with sensitive constitution. I process life deeply, information, my business options as well. And um, that leaves a perennial question of simplifying and identifying the big rocks, as you call them. The big rocks, and, yes. You know, when, when planning or making choices. Uh, and, um, and I noticed that you are both capable of a lot of depth and detail, but you can also kind of cut through it and just go, actually, but what's most important is this, this and this. And this is very hard for me. So I'm just curious of what goes on in you that it's possible. But today I thought of a, of a second question to ask you whether you've noticed whether, in, whether um, your type of human design plays a role in this because some people are more defined you know, in human design where they, are, they have more stable phenomenon. So they, are kind of, they, they have the, 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 the information available in them in a more kind of reliable way. And some people are more organic and sort of unpredictable in functioning. I have a lot of those gates. And so I'm curious that the second question is, have you noticed whether some people are taking your principles but applying them very differently than you do? Mm. Whether you have those examples or stories, because I, that might be supportive as well, you know, because I, yeah. I cannot show up for my timed appointment with self and it's, you know, I kind of feel so bad about it. But uh, appointment it with point. yourself, not appointment yeah. with others, right? Yeah. 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 With others, you know, with others, it's easy. There's an but expectation. With yeah. myself, with things that are not urgent but important, and that I know that they need to happen often enough in business, but it is so hard. So. Yeah. Oh. Anything that comes to mind to illuminate. Um, or is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for asking this and raising this. Um, if you have other examples of the depth, depth junkie, um, actually, do you want to mention a few quick examples of what it means to be a depth junkie <laughs> or situations so, where? <laughs> so, you know, like you see so many layers to a question to, or to uh, something. And yes. And so, so one danger is that you, you, you borrow down and, and my work sessions, I cannot stop because I just go more and more and more. But at some point it starts to be counterproductive or I cannot start because, because the whole thing, I don't know how to choose something that's shorter and simpler. So that's. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much Dorota for, for asking this and just for, I'm going to take you off screen for now, but you can come back if you need to. And can anyone relate? I'm sure Dorota is the only one uh, with, with this issue. So maybe we'll move on. No, I mean, all of us can relate. I mean, myself included. I mean, I, all of us have this part of within us and some of us have that part much bigger within us, much more influential. So I welcome you to comment below. You probably have either a you know an empathy for this situation. Maybe you have any a particular example recently where you experienced this kind of death, death junkie, as Dorota names it, or you have a tip, you have a a method that works for you. Go ahead and chat below. I, I think this discussion will be as useful as whatever I'm going to come up with right now. So, uh, you know, the example here is like. If I was a death junkie or if I allowed that part to, to reign right now, this call, this answer would be, you know, 12 hours long, right? <laughs> or, or it would be like, you know, uh, 30 minutes long instead of uh, 10 minutes long or for five minutes long. So I'm, I'm purposely going to um, activate my, uh, what is the antidote to the death junkie? The, the boundary junkie, perhaps? <laughs> the the uh, extreme boundary uh, artist, um, something like that? Uh, cause yeah, I think it's about boundaries and, um, I have a, I have a video, which I will link you to, cause you're a death junkie. You, you don't mind giving extra links here. Um, a, a video called, uh, temporary constraints. So you can just go to my, you can Google this George Cow temporary constraints, and you could watch, I think I've talked about it several times in, over the years. And that's essentially my main strategy. Now, the, the, you talk about my human design, and that might be interesting for you to know. I, I actually don't know my human design very well. I um, I don't even like to reveal it, to be honest, because people start to make assumptions. And 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 also, not assumptions about me so much. Like, oh, well, George is that, so therefore I can't be like this. And therefore, they, they, they're, they're, there can be an assumption of, well, if I can't be like George's human design, that, that means his strategies won't work for me. I don't think that's necessarily true. So I'm going to keep that secret. 
But what, what I have found about my own patterns over the years is I think I have a, I have a great impatience. I think that's really the main thing. I think, I think a death junkie is more patient than me, or, or maybe that part of me is stronger. Like, for example, I, I can't read books. So that's one of my, that's one of my weaknesses. I have a hard time. I have lots of books. I own lots of them because they look really good. The design, cover design and the, you know, the, the previews, the reviews look really good. Oh my God, I buy the book. And then I can't, I have a hard time reading. To be honest, I just, I have a hard time reading. Uh, courses too. I'm pretty impatient about courses. Like I'll go through the first couple of you know, videos and my like, guy, right, I think I'm done. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for those of you who are depth junkie enough to go through my courses. I'm so grateful because I see your engagement. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope this is helpful. But because I'm so impatient, I like to bottom line everything. I'm like, all right, basically, what are you telling me? Like, what's the punchline here? Like, I always try and try to get to the punchline. And so I think that helps me to, uh, so I have two things I'll share with you here. One is I encourage you to explore the impatient side of you, because I think that might be a natural antidote to, to depth junkiness. It's like, Sure, there's a rabbit hole that will go forever. I mean, it's kind of like a Wikipedia. You read one Wikipedia article, it's going to link you to 12 more. It's impossible because it's like a it's like a tree that branches out. And it's like you start here, it's going to branch out forever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for me, I'm like, I don't have I don't have the patience to go for the other 12. Just tell me what you're telling me, right? Which is why it's interesting, you know, that the, the, the new tool that just was recently released as the recording, ChatGPT, the AI chat tool, that has knowledge up until 2021. Unfortunately, I can't browse the internet, but it's like, it's very bottom line answers. It's like you, you chat with the, the AI, you go, tell me about this. And they just give you like three short paragraphs and that's it. You're like, okay, all right, I think I'm good here. You have to keep asking them. And I, I feel like that's like a good boundary. It's like, okay, we're not gonna tell you everything you need, the 12 books to read. We're gonna tell you three paragraphs. And so there's, um, so it's a couple of things. One is, explore the impatience part of you and go, just give me, give me the bottom line. Like what's, what's the essential thing I need to know for the next step. So that's the next thing I want to give you is I'm always, uh, I, as, as I continue, especially entrepreneurship, I've noticed that every step I take changes the horizon. It's very interesting. So I first think I'm looking at this landscape and there's a mountain here and there's a swamp there. I am going to avoid the swamp. I'm going to kind of head towards the mountain. And then I take a few steps. I'm like, oh my God, I, suddenly a lake has appeared. Like that wasn't there before. And the swamp turns out to be a mirage. Like, what, and the mountain turns out to be more of a, just a hill. There's actually a bigger mountain. So like, like every step creates a different horizon. So that's why for me, my impatience works for me. I'm like, give me the bottom line next step. What's the next thing I need to do? Okay, because I know I take the next step, it's going to change again. <laughs> you know, my interest is going to change. The horizon is going to change. The market changes every step I take. Not maybe every, literally every step, but you know, on a regular basis, right? So that's the second part. And then the final part is this idea that no matter what, and this is, I know you believe this. Somehow, I think life takes care of us in mysterious ways, the fact that you're here watching this right now means life has taken care of you up to this point and life will continue to take care of you. Your, the life, meaning your higher self, will always jump in at the right time to save you, various things. God, your angels, your just consciousness, society, whatever you want to say, but life will take care of you. And I end with that because... That gives me the peace that even if I don't go down the rabbit hole, even if I just take the next step, it's okay. Because if some if there's an important piece of information and I trust that life is going to take care of me, and I didn't read the 12 other articles that are related to this topic, I didn't have the patience. I, I had the patience to read half of one article. I go, you know what? That's all I have the patience for right now. I'm getting tired because I really, I get tired easily when I read. I don't know if you knew that. I, I really can't read much. So I get tired quickly. I'm like, okay, I, I read half an article and that's this, this one step I think I can take. I think I'm going to take that one step. There's 12 other articles, but whatever. I trust that life 
will give me the essential information that I need. Because if I take that one step and I really should have read the 12 articles, then I'll make a mistake, a missed take. And life will go, ah, not so much that. And I'll go, oh, I have the motivation now maybe to read another article because I made a mistake and I, and I only had the patience to read one more and I'll try something different. And through that, I find that life just keeps taking care of me. Whatever essential information I trust life will bring to me at the right time, well, it'll help me adjust based on my, based on my mistakes. So with that, therefore, I'm able to go, I have one hour for this topic right now. I have one hour to prepare this course. I have one hour to uh, study this technology. I have one hour or half an hour or whatever boundary time. Or, or listen, I have a big project I want to do in the future. And it's there's so many things to do for it. But I have one hour to show up for this project right now. I'm just going to do whatever I can do with this one hour, knowing that the horizon changes with each step. So I hope this is helpful. And I look forward to seeing your comments below as well.